Good morning, afternoon, or evening. My name is Shannon, and today we are going to be doing the mid-year freakout tag, I think is what it's called. So let's just get started. I'm going to be starting by giving you guys my stats for the first half of this year. So my goal for this year was to read 100 books, although technically I really want to try to read 120 books this year. And so far I have read 53 books this year, which is ahead of my goal. And to be able to be on track to read 120 books this year, I will need to read at least 7 books in the rest of this month. So I'm really happy with where I'm at. With that the first question for this tag is the best book you have read so far this year and if you have previously watched my channel you probably know my answer but it without a doubt is going to have to be pride and prejudice by jane austen i read this back in march and i instantly gave it six stars i adore this book so so much i think it is absolutely perfect and I would highly, highly recommend this book to anyone that is looking to get into reading classic literature. If you are unaware, this book is about Elizabeth and Jane Bennett, and they live, I wouldn't say they're poor, but they're certainly not rich by any means. And this suitor comes into town. He is immediately taken by Jane and his best friend is kind of taken by Elizabeth, but he is very much reserved and kind of looks down on them because of their social standing. And it's just such an incredible romance and read and there are so many double meanings and the way that it is written, it is just such an outstanding book. So good. Absolutely my favorite book this year. And then the next question was the best sequel you ever read so far this year. And I don't know if I would call it a sequel because it's an interconnected standalone, but I would have to give it to The Undercover Bromance by Lissa K. Adams. I love this series so far. If you aren't aware what this series is about, basically there is a bromance book club and they use romance books as manuals for their relationships and I just absolutely adore it but this specific one is about Liv and Nash and Liv has just been fired very unjustly at this restaurant that she's she was working at and she kind of makes it her mission to get back at this guy and Nash is like please let me help you and she's having no parts of it in the beginning but she kind of warms up to him um I I just love their dynamic and if I had to explain it to someone i would describe it as the kind of way that nesta and cassian start out if that makes sense like the banter and they kind of are both very stubborn and hard-headed and i just absolutely loved it the next question is a new release you want to read but haven't yet and for me that's going to have to be funny story about emily henry this book the premise is just so, so interesting. This is about Daphne and Miles, and Daphne and Miles are in a very, very similar boat because their exes just left them for each other. And so, looking for someone to live with, Daphne reaches out to Miles, and they end up becoming roommates. And if they end up posting some misleading photos on social media, leading people to believe that they're in a relationship together, why not? And I just absolutely love the premise of that. And I saw someone say on TikTok that Miles reminded them of Nick Miller from New Girl, who is the epitome of a book boyfriend in my opinion. I, oh my gosh, I could go on about Nick Miller for forever, but that made me want to read this so, so much more than I already did. And I'm very excited to get to it. The next question is the most anticipated release for the second half of this year and for me that would have to be Reckless by Lauren Roberts. This is the second book in the Powerless trilogy, I think. I have not put my review for Powerless up yet but I am currently in the middle of it and I am loving it and I'm so so excited 
for this book to come out in a month and I feel like I'm reading Powerless at the perfect time where I won't really have to wait that long to get the next book and I'm just so so excited but Powerless if you didn't know is about Peyton and Kai and Peyton has been faking having like magical abilities basically and she ends up getting intercepted let's say by Kai the prince and she ends up going into the purging trials which is basically like a hunger games for magical people and so you can see that that's obviously kind of problematic because she actually doesn't have any magic and it's an enemies to lovers and it's just it's so so good and i'm so excited for this next book to come out the next question is the biggest surprise and for me i have two books for this because I didn't really expect either of them to be really hard hitters for very different reasons, but I'll get into that in a second. So the first one is Happy Place by Emily Henry. This is my first Emily Henry book I ever read. I listened to the audiobook for this primarily, and I didn't think I would ever rate an audiobook five stars because the voice has to be perfect because I'm used to like hearing it in my own head and... So I almost never rate audiobooks five stars, but this book, tell me why I was crying from an audiobook. I just absolutely adored this book. I rated it five stars. I just thought it was complete perfection. And I also knew that Emily Henry's books were kind of more literary fiction based than romance for the most part and so i wasn't really expecting to love it because i don't love literary fiction but this book was so so good and it moved me in ways i didn't know i could be moved this book is about harriet and win and a couple months ago they broke up they have not yet told their friend group and they end up going on a vacation together with their friend group and pretend to be together so that to like keep the peace kind of thing and this, I think this is really what made me fall in love with this book. Um, if you've ever seen the movie 500 Days of Summer, kind of off topic, but it's one of my favorite, favorite movies ever. I would highly recommend it. The way that she does her timeline in this is very, very similar to that. And it just made it feel so woven together perfectly. Like, the timeline for this book flips back from, like, the happy place to them falling in love, to them breaking up, and just, it's all very meshed together, and I just absolutely adored it. I thought it was perfect. I have nothing but the best to say about this book. And then the other surprise I had was Ninth House by Leo Ardugo. I have tried to read this before, and it was kind of slow for me. So I decided to listen to the audiobook and I was actually working while I listened to this whole audiobook. I listened to it in a day and it was not at all what I was expecting because from the back of the book you get a very vague kind of description in my opinion. This book's about Galaxy or Alex and she has recently started at Yale University because she was recruited for the purpose of keeping an eye on the secret societies working within Yale University and it's all magic based and the special thing about Alex is that she can see ghosts all the time and usually the people in her group have to like take some kind of drink in order to see ghosts before observing rituals for these societies and it just takes so many turns. There's a murder that happens in New Haven and she's like, I think this might be related to something that's going on with the secret societies and she looks into it and it's just, it takes so many twists and so many turns. And then while all of this is going on, there's a greater plot of her mentor has gone missing at the beginning of the school year and she's having to do it all without him and that storyline is continued in the next book and it's just so so good it's much more fantasy based than i anticipated it was going to be and i just absolutely adored it i rated it 4.75 stars 
the next question was favorite new author debut or new to you and for me I do have two again it would have to be either Emily Henry or Abby Jimenez I read both of these authors for the first time this year and I already knew I was going to love Abby Jimenez but part of your world and yours truly really just brought that home for me I just absolutely adore her books and her romances are much deeper than they appear and it kind of reminds me of Lucy Scores books in some aspects and then Emily Henry I have read two of her books so far I absolutely adored both of them and the way that she writes men in her books I just absolutely adore it and in the books I have read at least it is always guy falls first and I love that and just that I love the way that she writes fictional men so much I don't think I could emphasize it strongly enough how much I love that anywho the next question is your newest fictional crush and I wasn't sure at first because originally I was leaning towards one guy but then I was looking through the books I read this year and I was like oh my god has to be him Jack Smith from Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. This man, oh sweet Moses, he's incredible. Okay, let's start about the premise for this book first off. This book is about Elsie and Jack, and Elsie has been moonlighting as a fake girlfriend. And there is one guy that she consistently went on fake dates with, introduced her to his family, and his brother happens to be Jack. Jack has always been very odd about Elsie, treated her a little bit odd, and then when she's going in for her interview to become a theoretical physicist at, I think, Harvard? I don't know. But it's this huge interview process, very important, and lo and behold, Jack is the head of the program. And he's like, what the hell are you doing? This is not what you do for a living, because as his brother's girlfriend, she told them that she was a librarian and so he starts getting very confused and he notices the way that she adapts to every situation to kind of be exactly whatever the other person in the conversation needs and he consistently calls her out on it and he tries to teach her to ask for what she wants rather than just being a people pleaser and i just loved him so so much and the way that he made her ask for what she wanted i just loved it i loved it i loved him he was the best <sighs> the next question was a book that made you cry and this was a reread but it definitely made me cry the hardest out of every book i've read this year so far it is magnolia parks a long way home by jessa hastings i adore this series for those of you who don't know this is a five star series for me I reread this back in February in anticipation of Into the Dark coming out, which I still haven't read because I am a f coward and I'm horrified to read it because I don't want to read the confrontation between Magnolia and Julian because I know it's going to break me. Anywho, um, I sobbed. And when I say I sobbed, I mean I like legitimately choked back sobs, hysterical crying for like 30 minutes at the end of this book. Meanwhile, I just cried so many times through on it as well, but I love this book. I don't really know how to describe this book to someone who hasn't read it, but the series as a whole is it kind of about elite socialites in London mixed with kind of gangs. I don't know how to explain it. Basically, it's toxic romances. Think Gossip Girl, but in London and without Gossip Girl. That's... The way I like to describe it but I just I literally have a reading vlog of when I reread this up on my channel if you want to see me like cry I am not well thinking about this it always makes me cry the next question was a book that made you happy and I just want to preface before I show this book that all of my books make me happy first off let's start there because I wouldn't be reading it if it didn't make me happy except in one case where i read a god awful book this year 
because I truly wanted to see how she could try to redeem this character and she didn't. I rated the book one star. I wish I didn't finish it. Anywho, this book made me giddy, kicking my feet, giggling at the way that the things came together in the end. Anywho, it was Girl Abroad by L. Kennedy. This book is so so good. It is about Abby who has recently moved to London for a year abroad and when she gets to her flat she learns that all of her roommates are guys and one of them is a very very dashing Australian rugby player. I just want you to get that picture in your mind before I go on. And then they end up going out one night and they run into a bassist who's a friend of theirs and she starts having a thing for him as well. And I was very reserved about this book in the beginning at first because the bassist I just mentioned has a girlfriend. And I am not for the cheating trope. If it happens, I usually will stop reading because it bothers me that much. Um, but that did not happen. I was very happy that Abby drew a line and was like, no. Nah. Um, I really appreciated that. But there is a g kind of subplot going on about this painting that she's writing a paper on. And it kind of gets messy, I'm not even gonna lie. But the way that things come together in the end, especially for this one character, I was giggling so happy for her that this played out in p literally the best way possible. <laughs> um, but I just absolutely adored this book and she definitely ended with, up with the right person in this. The next question was the most beautiful book that you have bought so far this year and for me this answer was obvious it has to be heaven breaker by sarah wolf okay i'm just gonna slow tour the book this is the front these are the sprayed edges okay okay and then that's the foil on the hardcover and then the end papers I just, I can't. This book is art. This book is basically about revenge. There's this girl who is the bastard daughter of a duke and he doesn't know she survived because he ordered that both her and her mother were killed. Anywho, she decides to come back with a vengeance. She wants to kill everyone in House Hout Claire, but then she starts to have a connection with one of the people in the house and I'm just so excited to read this and i'm so happy that i was able to get this edition of it the last question is books that you need to read by the end of the year now i don't like using the term need because i don't need to do anything but i would really like to get to these books by the end of the year the first being the rest of the books in the boys of toman series i have not read saving and redeeming six or taming seven I absolutely adore the first books in the series. I rated them five stars. One of them is a six star read for me. I just absolutely adore this series and I'm so, so excited to get back into it. I'm just kind of scared because when I did read Binding and Keeping 13, I was put in a massive book hangover that lasted arguably for like three months. <laughs> I am very excited to get to them, especially Claire and Gibbsy's book, but very much hoping I can get to this before the year's out. And for those of you who aren't aware, this is a YA sports romance series based in Ireland where I honestly don't think it should be YA. Let me start by saying that first off, because while there aren't really any explicit scenes, in that essence, there are very heavy topics dealt with in the, these books. And I just wouldn't go into them lightly thinking you're gonna get like a light YA romance because that's not, that's not what this is at all. But I do love the series. Next, there's another series, but I would love to be able to finish the Cruel Prince trilogy this year. I have The Wicked King on my TBR for this month. I read The Cruel Prince last year and I literally loved it and I knew that if I were to binge this series I would become hyper focused on it, incredibly obsessed, and I decided I should space it out so that that didn't happen but now too much time has gone on and I'm just 
incredibly excited to get back into this series. I'm excited to see Jude again so much. She is probably one of my favorite female characters of all time, but I would really, really like to get to finish it. Next, this is not specific to this book, but I would really, really like to get to read more classic literature this year. I have another classic literature book on my TBR for this month. Not Little Women, but another one. Ever since reading Pride and Prejudice, I just have an itch to get into these because they're so outstanding and beautiful and while literature has definitely changed a bunch since they were published, they are still incredible, incredible books. And I would really, really like to get to read either Little Women or More Jane Austen or The Bronte Sisters. I'm so excited to read more classic literature. And then lastly for this category, I did mention it earlier in this video, but I would really, really like to get to finish Emily Henry's backlist. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure she only has five books. I have already read Beach Read and Happy Place. I would really, really like to get to read Funny Story and these two books as well. And, and I feel like summer is the perfect time to do that. So hopefully I'm able to get done with them before the year is over, but... I'm very excited to read more of her books. Anywho, that is the end of today's video. I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. All my social media is linked down below for you guys. I hope you all are having an absolutely wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.